hello guys so welcome back thanks for clicking so we're going to be checking out our quran destroys atheism in less than 10 words atheism are those people that don't believe in god at all so they call them atheists anybody that doesn't believe in god he's not in any religion such as he's not a muslim he's not a christian he's not an Hindu. he's just neutral those are those people called atheists so we are going to watch out quran refuse or destroy atheism so let's check it out the argument from dependency can be used to make an irrefutable case for god's existence it goes like this everything we observe in the known universe is dependent mm. When we say that something is dependent, we mean that its existence and the properties it has requires an explanation outside of itself. To argue otherwise is to imply that these things gave rise to themselves. This is like saying that something both exists and does not exist at the same mm. time, which is obviously an absurd proposition. Mm -hmm. A good example to help demonstrate this principle is a triangle. The triangle's property of the number of angles cannot vary. It can never be anything other than three, because triangle means having three oh angles. So by its very definition, a triangle is a thing that has three angles. This property of having three angles is explained by the very existence of there being a triangle. By contrast, the triangle's property of color can vary. Similarly, the lengths of its sides can also vary as they can be longer or shorter. The size and color of the triangle are properties that are not explained by the mere existence of the triangle. Hence, triangles in the physical world are dependent things, because we must look to an explanation that is external to the triangle in order to explain its existence. If we apply these same principles to the universe, then we come to the conclusion that it is dependent, because it too has properties that could be different to how they currently are. For example, the number of stars and planets it contains. This raises the question, how did the universe come to be? What explains it? The explanation for the universe cannot be anything that is dependent. Otherwise, we end up in a situation where the explanation requires an explanation, which does not explain anything. Besides, trying to use something that requires an explanation to explain something that requires an explanation will never give us any answers, mm -hmm. as it leads to an infinite regress of explanations, which is absurd. Think of a line of dominoes that goes on forever you will never arrive at a point where they stop falling. We conclude that whatever explains the universe must itself be independent. Now, not only does it have to be independent, it also has to be eternal. In fact, independent things are by their definition eternal. Mm. If they're not eternal, then it means they have a beginning and things with a beginning need an explanation. Yeah. That is to say they are dependent upon something external to explain why they came into being. So how does the Qur'an relate to all of this? The 112th chapter of the Qur'an defines this independent, eternal existence as Allah. Say, He is Allah, the One. Allah is He on whom all depend. He begets not, nor was He begotten. And there is none comparable to him. Allahu Samad, which means that Allah is He on whom all depend, highlights Allah's independence. And Lem Yelid, Walem Yulad, which means He begets not, nor was He begotten, implies eternality. Mm. We can see that in less than 10 words, the Quran describes our Creator in a way that provides an irrefutable argument for His existence. Allah is the independent, eternal reality that explains the origin of life, the universe and everything. Atheists might respond by claiming that the universe is eternal and therefore it does not require an explanation. This does not help them because an eternal universe still has certain properties that could be different to how they are. Therefore, there must be something external to the universe that explains its physical properties. Hence, even an eternal universe is dependent. To help illustrate this, let's take the example of an eternal red triangle. The fact that the triangle has existed forever does not stop it from requiring an explanation for why it's red and not another color. It does not matter whether the thing we are discussing is a triangle or universe. Nothing magically becomes independent just because it is eternal. Another response that atheists might put forward is that science will eventually come up with an explanation that does not require God. This is actually not the case 
as the argument from dependency is a metaphysical argument. Metaphysical arguments are based on first principles which transcends all science. If you deny first principles, then it has logical implications that lead to a worldview based on absurdity. You can bring any scientific theory now or in the future, and this metaphysical argument will still be valid. Science can only refer to things that are dependent, because it relies on observations. If you can observe something, then you are dealing with a dependent thing, because it need not have existed, or could have existed in a different way, i.e. with potentially different properties. One final challenge posed by atheists is to ask why can't the eternal independent cause behind the universe be some blind unconscious process? Why should anyone believe that it has a will at all? In response, simply put, since the universe could have been otherwise, then it stands to reason that a decision maker is required to determine its existence from non-existence and decide which properties it has out of other possible properties. The ability to choose is the characteristic of a being that has a will and is fully conscious. This independent, eternal being that chose to create is whom we Muslims call Allah. To learn more about the miracles of the Quran, please download your free copy of the book. Well, beautiful one. Um, it's just trying to say that as long as, you know, we didn't come to this art alone, it's a true God. So there's no way you want to we have this mindset that there's no God. I'd say that you think about it that how do you come on this earth? So he's talking about independence, how independent, how you no know, God is, what God can do, and why science science is one of the reasons why most people don't believe in God because of the things science try to you know experiment to try and try to prove to try and experiment the work of God and the rest. So, it's just a powerful message trying to tell us that God is one, God is there, it's God that created us. We need to believe Him even though we don't see Him. That's the main reason why we need to trust and believe Him more because someone that you don't see and the person keeps doing signs and wonders in your life because there's no way you're not pass through tribulation or at times. But if you see that ah, this God has been really, that's the main reason why you should believe that there's God. If your existence alone should prove that there is someone up there who is God. Because we cannot come to this earth alone. There's no way we can, you know, there's no way we can mold ourselves. Even science can never, no matter the experiment they want to do, they can never create a human being. That is the scientific things that they can never invent. Never. It can never happen. But this was a beautiful one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.